Hey everyone, and welcome to this introductory video on Unreal Engine and source control. In this set of videos, I am gonna go through a number of different ways that we can integrate source control with the Unreal Engine 4. And if you're not aware, all source control is, is just a way to keep your files and projects backed up and secured. So if anything ever happens, you'll have some point at which to go back and recover those files or a project in a working state, just to save you time from losing or destroying an entire project. It's definitely recommended that on any projects that you're intending to work on for a long period of time, even if it's just a solo project, just to put those on some kind of source control. It's actually really simple. It's something that people seem to be worried about trying to get set up. And I'm just gonna go through those and try and get all of the intimidating factors out of the way up front for you guys. This is just like I mentioned, an introduction. We're not actually gonna do anything in this video. I just wanted to take a little bit of time to explain what the next few videos are gonna be covering, uh, why it's gonna be useful, and just to give a breakdown of the different options available and also give some pros and cons. And people have asked what I use specifically, so I'll include that as well. What I intended this to do more than just to provide information on what I use though, is to give some insight for you guys to try and go away and decide what you think is gonna work best for you and then make that decision on what you're gonna download and use for your projects. Now I'm gonna cover all of the things that I mention and show you how to set them up separately. So you can look at these videos individually and uh, pick and choose again what sounds best for you. So there's three main options I'd say that most people use for source control with pretty much any game engine, but especially with Unreal that I've seen so far. Now the first of these is, I think is gonna be the most well-known and utilized one. And this is uh, a combination of GitHub, which is the website and the place which you'll actually be storing your information and a combination of the desktop application uh, of Git, which is Git desktop. Now these two are pretty good. Uh, GitHub for the most part is free for the basic package. As I mentioned, it's the most well-known one and heavily utilized, uh, for instance, even Unreal, with the different build versions of their engine and the plugins and things like that. They store most of their stuff on GitHub. So we're gonna look at this one in the first video. Now, the main cons that I see of this one are that the repositories, if you want to keep this completely free, are always going to be public, which means anyone can access them by simply sharing a link around. Now, for most projects, that's not going to be a problem. I do have some of my personal projects on GitHub uh, because there's a few things I'm not worried about being shared around. But if you wanted to keep your repositories completely private, then you do have to pay a certain amount per month. And also, if you wanted to extend this to incorporate bigger projects, then again, you do need to pay another tier up as well. Then the next option I think is very popular and is something I use a lot uh, for most of my projects is using the website Bitbucket, which is again, where you're gonna store all of your information and hold the projects and a combination of Source Tree, which is the application that we'll be using on the desktop with it. Now this one I think has a few more pros. Generally, I think the amount of data that you get to store on this is slightly higher than Git uh, and it's completely free. And on top of that, you also get full access to private repositories. Now, I've released a few different things for the Unreal Engine. For instance, I have my Patreon, and some of the tiers in the Patreon service provide some early access to the projects that I use when I'm recording the tutorials. So if you wanted some early access to those, then I put those on my Bitbucket repository, just so that they stay completely secure and private, just to the people who have made those higher pledges. I've also released things which are completely free of charge, like my third person platformer pack, which was just an idea to try and get some more juicy kind of controls into a uh, template platformer. And because that's completely free, that I've just put that on GitHub because that's a completely open and public repository. So that's the kind of idea behind why you would use one over the other and some actual examples of me using both because uh, I tend to have everything uh, ready and utilize them depending on what the, the project is aimed for. Like I mentioned though, people have asked specifically what I use and I would say the majority of the time I stick with Bitbucket and Source Tree just because they tend to be a bit easier to use for me uh, and because I do like the option of having that private repository option as in when I need it. The final one that we're gonna be looking at though in the third and final video of this series will be Perforce. Now this has been becoming a lot more popular, especially inside of Unreal because it does have built-in support. And that's gonna be one of the main pros I'd say for this one is that you can actually make 
and pool changes of the Perforce repository, which is the application and the storage inside of the Unreal editor. So it does save a few steps of having that desktop application as well. Uh, now Git does have something very similar and we will be looking at that with the Git extension, but it does claim that it's in beta. So it might be a little bit more finicky than the Perforce, which does have full built-in support. Now, the re reason I don't use this is it's a bit harder to set up I've used this with companies that I work with and it just seems a little bit more troublesome than the others. I have things like certain files just not being added or followed when I've specified that I need them to be in the project. And for the amount of time it takes to set it up, the fact that it's in the editor doesn't have as big a selling point to me just because, as I said, it can be a little bit more troublesome to work with. So I, I'm happier to work with something like Source Tree and make the commits and pushes in the third party application because I know that it's worked 100% of the time for me and it's very, very simple to use. So like I said, the structure for this, this is just an introduction. So hopefully now you've got an idea of what we're gonna be looking at. Um, the pros and cons, they're all so similar that there's not a whole lot to discuss about them, but maybe from that you can see uh, which one might work for you, whether you want the uh, more well-known provider like Git and you're happy with the public repositories, whether you're gonna be interested in the source tree and Bitbucket, so you've got that option for the private repositories, or whether you wanted to look at something like Perforce for the built-in support of the Unreal editor. So they're really the main differences between them though. And the way that I planned to structure this is we're going to go into the Git and GitHub installation in the first video. In the next video after that, we're going to go through source tree and Bitbucket. And then we're gonna wrap up by going through the Perforce installation so that we can see how all of these can be set up. And like I mentioned, you can choose which one best suits you. So hopefully you'll find something in this set of videos useful. As always, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content from any of the playlists on your channel. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.